Hello everyone. My name is uh, Pushpender Pandey. I am from Indian Institute of Technology, Delhi. Today we will talk about uh, the implicit and uh, explicit method. Uh, what are the nuances associated with these two methods? I am really hopeful that uh, you will be able to understand in next couple of minutes. All right. So there are first two generic statements applicable for uh, all the schemes, not necessarily for these two implicit and uh, explicit scheme. So these two are analytical methods to solve your equations. The second is the unknown is found for the next step using your known or unknown quantity. I'll explain uh, in next couple of seconds that what do I mean by known or unknown quantity. Now to understand uh, this, let us take an example of uh, any function. All right, which is varying over time. Let's say in this particular uh, fashion. Now the, uh, we have unknown quantity at t equals to n. The task is to find out the unknown quantity at t n plus one. All right. Now we will find out the y at t n plus one using uh, your explicit scheme and your implicit scheme. First for your uh, explicit scheme, the solution at the next step is found using slope at the known time step. We will find the, uh, the unknown by using the slope of the known time step. The question is this y at n plus 1 will be equals to your y at n. This is your known quantity plus delta t. Delta t is your uh, the time step which we are supplying in your finite element uh, tool. Then your differentiation of this particular function at t equals to n. Now this is known to us a delta t is we are supplying so it is also known to us y equals to n this is known to us this is this was the only unknown quantity so we can estimate it easily uh, for your explicit scheme uh, the solution at the next step is found using slope at the unknown time step here uh, the question look like something this y at n plus 1 equals to y at n plus delta t dot y uh, dash n plus 1 that is a differentiation of uh, of this function is done at the unknown step. So since, since this is an unknown quantity, so we cannot use uh, uh, our uh, analytical methods to solve your uh, uh, your unknown quantity. We have to rely on your uh, methods like newton raphson uh, to iterate it and to find out the value of your unknown. Now the one thing which is to be noticed here is that for your explicit scheme, the unknown unknown and the known quantity these two are uh, uh, lying explicitly on the either side of the equation that all the known quantities are on the RHS all the unknowns are on the LHS side of the uh, your equations so the name is explicit these two are explicitly defined now for implicit you can see that the known quantity and the unknown they these two are lying on the same side of the equation and hence the name is your implicit we have to uh, uh, solve it uh, using your uh, some other methods other than analytical it's to solve this nature of uh, equation. So this was uh, just a basic difference between explicit and implicit. Uh, in next slide, we will understand about uh, the detail uh, difference or the similarity between these two in connection to your uh, FE process. The first is governing equation. Now the governing equation is going to remain same no, math, uh, no matter which scheme you are going to utilize whether your explicit scheme or your implicit scheme. Uh, it will use your uh, the basic uh, Newton's law your f external is equals to your uh, mass multiplied by your acceleration plus damping multiplied by your uh, velocity plus stiffness multiplied by your displacement same for your implicit scheme. Uh, for your displacement estimation here the x is uh, uh, known by using your uh, acceleration so we will keep everything on the rhs ex except your acceleration for your implicit scheme it is found using displacement so we will keep everything on the rhs except your uh, displacement it, that's how the equation will become all right now for the cpu time estimation uh, uh, this, this is very economical for the large models as a mass matrix inversion is quite easy here the mass matrix in the explicit is lumped 
lumped in the sense that it has only diagonal elements all the non diagonal elements are zero so it becomes really easy for the computer uh, to do the inversion of the matrix and uh, found out the value of it for your uh, implicit scheme uh, we are doing the inversion of your uh, stiffness matrix since it is it, it it becomes really cumbersome and really difficult for the computer to do the inversion it takes a lot of time since your uh, larger model consists of millions of uh, degrees of freedom and to estimation of these two these quantities uh, becomes really uh, difficult or very time consuming uh, the stability factor here uh, it is conditionally stable your time step always has to be less than equals to your characteristics length divided by the speed of sound in that material that is basically the the time taken by uh, your uh, wave to propagate across the edge of an element for your implicit method it is in unconditionally stable we can uh, pick up any large uh, time step as possible but still for the larger models in no matter how big the time step you are picking up it, it it still takes less time due to this particular inversion factor uh, the unknown estimation uh, as i have discussed in uh, the previous slide the next state is found used from your current state and the quantities to be estimated can be separated out at one side of equation the method is known as forward euler or the central difference method for example you can see that this particular differential equation uh, dy by dt equals to minus y square uh, t belongs to 0 and a you can see that y k plus 1 is equals to y k minus delta t dot y k square. You can see that uh, at k plus 1 is occurring on the one side of the equation. This is your uh, unknown and these two quantities are known to, known to us. Similarly, for your uh, implicit scheme, here uh, the unknown quantity will occur, uh, unknown and the known quantity will occur to the same side of the equation as observed here. All these points are I have already discussed, so I have no, I'll not go into the details of it. All right, so this was about uh, the basic differences and the similarities between your explicit and your implicit method. Please leave questions in the comment sections. Thank you so much for the listening.